Ryan, it's your book club. Take it away. Okay. Hey, guys. I, just like I did last year, uh, I picked uh, six issues, five stories from just various Marvel comics that are very easily available on Marvel Unlimited. Um, so uh, I got picked a bunch of good ones, I think. Um, I like, why, don't we, uh, why don't we start with... Um, I don't care. What do you guys want to start with? What, what if? You want to start with what if? Which one? Magic. Magic? Yeah. What if magic became the Sorcerer Supreme? This book rules. This is the book that put Leia Williams on the map. Um, she was a writer of X Factor doing Trial of Magneto right now. Um, I think this is great. Uh, I love magic, Ileana Rasputin as a character. Um, this is kind of just like a one shot that kind of ends and doesn't really go further, which is what one shots do. Um, but I think the the characterization of Doctor Strange and Ileana are perfect. I love it. I think this is a, a fun little read. It's a it's a it's a better uh, interpretation of the because we talked about it when we talked about what if the series that the uh, the idea is that you have to end on a cliffhanger that's like worse than the main continuity. I think the idea of like I don't feel like the story is unfinished when I fin when I read this. I, I it's what if what if she became the Sorcerer Supreme? I see that trajectory when I finish that book. This Absolutely, book, yeah, I'm like too. I totally get it. Yeah. Um, I love how this book ended where, where her and Dr. Strange are, are kind of like in a, a somewhat of a father daughter relationship. Mm -hmm. I really dig that. Um, <laughs> I, I love how Dr. Strange quipping, like when he's talking to Wong is like, Wong, we have a guest. She's feral. Yeah. She doesn't know what pastrami is. I love that line. Um, I don't know much about Ileana, but Wong, I, we have a lunch guest. Oh, yeah. What a rude word to emphasize. Like their banter is so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ban the banter is really good. And also one of the, uh, the aspects I love is how she can't, she mastered all other forms of magic besides creation magic, because she brings up the fact that she was made as an instrument of destruction. Yeah, how can that something who's built to destroy create? And when she's she the antichrist. Yeah. And so when she creates the staff of souls, it's such a good moment for her. And I love it. And then when like Doctor Strange is fighting, uh, what's his name? Bass, the best. Um. Oh, I got it here. Hold on. Uh, I'll find it. You keep going. Yeah. When, when especially the dude who raised Ileana in Limbo. Oh, Belasco. That guy. Yeah. Yeah. When she when Doctor Strange is fighting Belasco, and he's like, I think uh, an even match was worth it. He's like, please. I really liked Doctor Strange's arrogance in this. Uh, yeah. The 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 whole like when he when she's just like, no, I'll kill you with all my magic. He's like, I'm the Sorcerer Supreme. You're not going to do anything okay. to me. Yeah. Uh, and like the I, whole thing uh, is like, I'm tired. I want to retire, and I think you are the person who should take over. I, I, Ileana is such a fun character. Um, when you see her, uh, like in Limbo, she's like, I came of age in a place where we cut each other for fun. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid of nothing but myself. I grew up in hell, and like, I'm Ileana. I'm 15 years old. I'm the Antichrist. I'm like, I love it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or when she gets a ride from that trucker, and obviously he's trying to do things, and the Doctor Strange is like. Yeah, so that guy might deserve it. That guy deserved it, sure. Um, but, uh. Here's some quick, beautiful poetry that I love. Um, my thoughts are a warren of horrors I navigate in terror because I'm afraid to one day open the wrong doors and unleash hell as I was designed to do. I see them all, all the time, the violent ends I was intended to bring as the Antichrist. Um, yeah. yeah, I think it's just a, it's a good one, a little one shot. Um, yeah. Leia Williams loves this character so much. And uh, Death of Doctor Strange is currently going on, or it's about to happen. So there's going to be a new Sorcerer Supreme. Everybody wants it to be Ileana because she's the dopest. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably going to be Wiccan because yeah. he's the current hot sorcerer man. Um, but but Ileana, I'm I'll saying. Say. I, am, uh, <laughs> I am only irritated that there isn't more. To yeah. This yeah. 100%. Yeah. I would definitely read more of this because I would love to see Ileana do more Sorcerer Supreme stuff. Hell yeah. Um, let's move on from there. Why don't we talk about the two part Iron Man story? That, okay. that's, uh, that takes place in Paris with some real sets. So <laughs> I really like that. Yeah. Because a one. You see people turn the stone a lot in media. Mm -hmm. And of course, like you get the nightmares where someone's turned to stone and then they shatter and you know, oh shit, they're dead. Mm -hmm. This one is like, oh, it's not a dream. That's real. People are like when Tony Stark wakes up, he's like, are these and you see, are these bodies? And yeah. you see the mountain of bodies next that's rivaling the height of the Eiffel Tower itself. It's like yeah. Oh, uh, shit. the thing I, I haven't read this in a while. Like, this is Matt Fraction's Iron Man run. This is, I think, the best modern Iron Man run in besides the Cantwell stuff now, but like the best Iron Man run maybe ever. Um, but uh, coming back to this, uh, his Tony Stark is so good, and you really, really feel the weight of what's happening. Mm. Like, he's constantly like, I have to remind myself that these are people that I'm breaking through, and it's like I feel the weight and like the, how scared he feels. And like, the gray gargoyle, who is a silly French character, turns into a monster Hulk. Um, and I just, I, I find it 
utterly fascinating. I'm so, I was so happy to revisit this. There's some stuff in the middle about Bethany Cable and like this, the Tony Stark resilient. It's not important. We're here for the horror. There's a uh, there's a sequence where he, or Iron Man is blown through a building, uh, and the two couple in the build in the in the apartment that he flies through, and she and he's like, "Go away! He'll, he'll alert he'll alert us to to us," and they die uh, because of that. I that very tragic. Oh, yeah. Well written. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very emotional, very effective. Uh, one of my favorite lines is when uh, he first sees the gray gargoyle and he's like, well, sock gray freaking blue. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> That's pretty good. This, this, like, I love Iron Man and this is the run that really, like, solidified that run. Um, yeah, I think it's just, it's just a fun two issue. Like, it's it's pretty light. It's just, you know, um, gray, gar- gray gargoyle, like, really unleashing some horror. And, like, there's a line near the end where it's like, Pep, I think it's, like, a total loss of the city. And like I, he is in like so much trauma. He's like, I have to go. Please, please stay safe. But I can't. I gotta go think about this shit. And he just like the, the end of the issue. It's a silent page of him just like yeah. flying off because he just saw millions of people die. Um, yeah. Horrific stuff. I think it's. I think it's really. Oh, yeah. And he almost. He himself feels like he could have almost died because his arc reactor is cracked. Yeah. Um, art by Salvador La Roca. His art's hit or miss for me. I think it's mostly good here because when you're doing Iron Man like suits, he's really good at drawing suits. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The suit looks really good in this one. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, this one I read very late and I was almost I was oh, falling asleep. Buddy, you're fine. But the stuff that mattered, like I got, I think I fell asleep at one point with the Bethany stuff. Yeah, it's, that, that's not important to the story right but now. But yeah. the horror stuff and him seeing the bodies and like, yo, I gotta get out of here. Yeah, I just think it's, it, um, it, it hit, it definitely hit hard. I was like, man, that is a, that is a bad day in the life of Tony Stark. Uh, this, this took place during the Fear Itself event and the it's event itself wasn't really horror. It just, it is horror inspired. Uh, this um, one's horrible. This one is definitely horror. Um, I, I was going to ask you what what you thought of the rest of the fear itself event. I was interested after reading these. I think I think the event itself is fine. I think the mm-hmm. tie ins are considerably better. It is right. not the worst Marvel event of the last decade, but it's not the best either. It's right in the middle. Yeah, um, that was kind of when they were doing like one a year. Yeah, um, yeah. sometimes almost two a year. Yeah. Um, so why don't we move on from there? Move on to Marvel Zombie by Maxwell Prince oh. and the meanest. Uh, devil dinosaur moon girl you've uh, ever met in your life. Uh, Marvel Zombie has one of my favorite like recap pages, which is the letter oh. from Donnie to his mom. Are you okay? Uh, I'm gonna that, find that, you. that gives you the scope of what's going on, and I really love that. I thought that was a really effective way to open the issue. I'm glad, yeah. So I didn't know um, this character, Simon Garth Zombie, is a Marvel character from the 50s. He's part of their old horror magazine line. Um, and they have not done anything with him for like 60 years. And then uh, Maxwell Prince, who writes, who's the writer of Ice Cream Man, he's like, hey, can I uh, can I write a one shot that's really sad? And they're like, sure, go for it. Um, this is a story about the zombie apocalypse. And there is a zombie who's real happy and he just wants to be friends with people. And his name's Simon. Um, mm. I think the story rules. Um, it is so dark. I can't believe Marvel let this happen. But it's a one shot. So like, you know, it's a what if. Um, In the beginning, it reminded me a lot of love, of, uh, not love, Simon. Um What's the movie with Nicholas Holt as a zombie? Warm blooded. Oh, warm blood. Warm bodies. Warm, warm, warm bodies. bodies. Warm oh, bodies. No, okay, warm bodies. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 I never seen the movie, but I remember the trailers. It kind of reminded me. Of it's it too. good. It's good. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Um, yeah. So this is just it's just like a story of like people trying to survive. You got like um Daredevil and like Spider-Man. Spider-Man hanging out. They're trying to survive. They have a mission of like, oh, we got to go blow up this Miss, thing. Misty Knight, Kate Bishop, Hawkeye, Black Widow, and Moon Girl. Hell yeah! What, what a, a team! What a team! And there's like a robot devil dinosaur um falcon did you mention yeah. falcon falcon there too yeah falcon. falcon shows up um yeah but it's it's like a briefly hey we're hey we got a mission to do we need to we're gonna blow up this bomb but we need a living person to set the bomb off because of radioactivity and stuff um no not living person they need the zombie oh person. sorry they do need the zombie radioactivity so it um, specifically has to be a zombie that's right so um so donnie has a new friend who's a zombie so wait they, don't they say don't they say uh it needs to be a person, and they're like, could it be a zombie? Because they see Simon, and they're like, yeah, why don't yeah. we can? There's still this, there's still enough in there for the zombie to work, so we don't need to have a suicide bomber. Because doesn't yeah. she ask like, who wants to be a suicide bomber? Yeah, she does. Yes, she absolutely. Girl asks, who wants to be our yeah. suicide bomber? This 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 one is not afraid to, to just say some shit. And this moon funny. girl is ready to murder her friends. I she does. Yes. Oh yeah, um, she just lets her friends die. There's a there's a terrific page after after the the uh, uh, betrayal of of uh daredevil yelling uh like mm. what did she yell like do you have the page or no, he like, yells like, where's the bomb where's the bomb like the moon girl where's the bomb he is being eaten yeah it's, and he is crying oh my for god the bomb. it is you so see, good you see everyone else like you see spire like the zombie's about to break through the webbing uh misty knight gets bit hell yeah and then it's black tragic. widow is about to go down as well 
and he's crying for devil for moon girl like where's the bomb there's there's and then uh, she just takes the bomb off the side there's a beautiful page that um uh donnie is talking to uh, moon girl and he's like oh so like you used to have like a living dinosaur right or whatever and he's like yeah but you know uh, uh the, the devil died a long time ago and then donnie's like oh did you ever have to betray your friend like you're about to do to me huh and she's like yeah i am a piece of shit aren't i I guess I'll just kill all the Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I guess it's so wild. I can't believe this is, this, this book exists. <laughs> I was, that was definitely like where she decides to, I had to reread that page like three times. Cause I was like, you, yo, she, yeah, she, I'm, like, I'm looking at this. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah. She murdered all her friends for a zombie. Everyone else dies. And she just goes on this, on this dinosaur. And she's like, eh, I guess I'll just go I, uh, elsewhere. Bye. I, I, I picked this up on a whim and I read it. And I'm like, Oh God, I can't believe Marvel let this happen. Um, Otto has arms. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, Daredevil says, uh, "Defenders defend." And I was like, "That doesn't quite roll off the tongue," but I'm, no. I applaud you for trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah that's a just a nice, really grim one shot, and I'm glad Marvel allows it to happen. I mean, also when uh, <laughs> when uh, Daredevil was like, "Ten our fathers and call it even." He's yeah, still, yeah, yeah. Doing, still doing the Catholic thing. I'm like, all right, yeah. Once you're Catholic, you can't go back. True. Um, let's move on to what if. I, 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 don't, I don't know the what exact if, title. Uh, what if Marvel Universe went metal with Ghost Rider? Yeah, so this is like... I think that's what it... But metal, Ghost Rider, yeah. So this is takes place in the real world. But does it? <laughs> yes. So this... I Okay. It takes place in the Marvel Comics world where the heroes exist and they also have comics written. About yes. Them. Yeah. So, okay. But Robbie Ray isn't Ghost Rider yet? No, he's Ghost, no, he's Ghost Rider. Oh, he has... Okay, he has Ghost Rider. Okay. So, okay. This, this one, I felt it was like a mix of... Dark Knight's metal, but spoopy in a way, mm -hmm. which I still really liked because they talked about how people were using their blood in the ink, and I feel like Kiss did that. Yes, once. I I remember thinking it gets it like it took a while to ramp up to get to like the crazy stuff, but once it got to the crazy sacrifice mm -hmm. stuff, that's when it yes. got really wild. Well, I remember because there is you you shared a few pages on Twitter like this guy saying save the comics with the fire extinguisher. Oh, that's right, because yeah, you yeah. shared that on Twitter. I'm like, oh, that's where he got that. Um, I loved this issue. This is my favorite of the bunch. Hell okay. yeah. Um, I really love uh, this kind of like, let's just, what if, like, what if we did metal for, for Ghost Rider? Um, I like Robbie Reyes. I'm really excited. I re always love it when we hear his uncle in his ear because uh, that's the spirit that's possessed him. Um, the digs at comic book publishing where they're just like, yeah, we just print it here with this old mule and then we get it on the truck. <laughs> I thought that was all funny. And all the, like, the, the designs of the ending is just so cool. Oh yeah. Uh, when they're being attacked and it comes over the the uh, broadcast into the room. What's going on down there? Get those issues shipped. Nothing stops comics on print day. And then Robbie's like, this freaking business. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that was funny. And then uh, it's this is the one that I read the furthest back. So my memory on it isn't as good. But I remember there's like there's a band that they get, right? And yeah. Then, and then like they they It's a band from Latveria. Yeah. They come they come and visit. Right, and it's a Latverian band. Yeah. They're taking a tour and they want comics printed with their blood. And that's, that's why right. they're there. And like like they get in and uh, they see all the people working hard at their computers and they go, the silent struggle, that pointless search for meaning in the blinking void of life, it's even more beautiful than I ever could have hoped for. <laughs> God. Like, there's the three there's the three band members the the like the lead singer is like yeah I, I i'm a huge marvel comics fan i love marvel comics i love all these characters um and then the other two like couldn't be they don't care about comics like and the I think other loves yes. so here it's uh, that that one says yes hostingwald invades the marvel universe and then his his guitarist goes fandom is a cancer the fear of change is the fear <laughs> oh, of yeah. death that's the drummer yeah <laughs> and that's then the, pretty and then good the, and then she's like these colors burn my eyes sure. I, uh, it, it, it kind of reminds me a bit of Death Clock in a way, a little bit. Yeah, wait, oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it, it's weird because I like when you meet this band, they're all like happy. It's like, hey, we're cool. like the one is like super excited to be here. The other two are like, yeah. CB Savolsky, CB Savolsky talks to Robbie Reyes, and he's like, uh, th this band is like so hardcore, and we and you know that blah blah. blah. And he meets them, and they're like, hey, what's going on? We you know we're really excited to be here. What's so? What's the onus of the world turning completely? tentacle monster at the end i don't remember they i just remember the visuals in they my brain. have like they take they put their blood in the ink uh -huh. and the ink and the comic it turns into like like whoever reads the comic, oh, the comic becomes, comes alive yeah okay. whoever reads the book turns into like a hellish monster right and then because they put their blood in the ink and they did like some sacrificial rite or something mm -hmm. like the entire world goes into like some Stefan Sedgwick Marvel hell dream. It, it, the, the, it looks a lot like Stefan Sedgwick's uh, um, death vigil shit. You cannot. The, 
I wasn't going to. I wasn't yeah, even going to comment did, on it. It's the artist from um, Homesick Pilots. Rad. Yeah, I don't, definitely saw that. Um, he the 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 idea of like uh, Eli's uncle uh, that you know kind of being like, okay, well, let's change now. This is kind of cool though. I'm into this. Yeah. Like he's like so he's like okay with the world ending. Yeah, one thing I do as bonkers as that one was, I still had a fun time with it. Oh yeah, because that's like it's like I'm pretty sure when they were writing it, it's like f it, let's just have some fun. I just love that like every couple years, what if comes back? Uh, like Chip Zdarsky is doing the what if stuff now, and this was only 2018, so like they took a short break before bringing it back. Yeah. Um. All right, let's go to our final issue. Uh, I've been on a huge Ghost Rider kick. I mean, no, we just read Ghost Rider. We're gonna oh, read shit. a classic Ghost Rider issue. I about the Ghost Rider issue. Um, Ghost Rider number seven from 1993. Um, by Howard Mackey and Mark Texiera. I think Mark Texiera might be my favorite artist of all time, you guys. Um, it's his art is it's it's insane. I I I don't know anyone else who draws like him. Um, the shading, uh, the 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 character expressions, especially Blackout. Blackout is the is the vampire man who has one big eyeball. Uh, um, I think this I think this issue is very reminiscent, and I now realize uh, it is very reminiscent of of classic Swamp Thing. It, they're single issues of a character getting vengeance on different monsters. Um. Scarecrow is a villain who people know from DC. They don't really know there's a Marvel Scarecrow, but there is. Um, I think he's horrifying. He is terrifying. He has an obsession with Captain America, and only Captain America can stop him. because he's, he's I gonna... want to rip him open and show him what's inside. Yes. Um, it's inside us all, the fear. Um, this, again, is a Marvel comic that showed a dead baby. Uh, like, I, I, like, or not even a dead baby, but like uh, the outline the of, outline of, a, of outline a dead baby. Of a dead baby. The, the body um, outline of a dead baby. But yeah. like, it's, this comic is so metal. And and the stuff with Scarecrow, I I think works so well on such like an unnerving level. Um, and like the ending, it is so cool. And I love and I not the cry not the end with him crying about his sister. Um, but like it feels it feels like an like an issue of Swamp Thing where where he's like I need to die by Captain America only. And if you're not Captain America, I'm just gonna kill myself. Yeah. And he jumps onto his own pitchfork, mm -hmm. and then it's three panels of him on a pitchfork. And I'm like, oh man, this is classic comedy. Yeah, he's man. taken away by someone. Yeah, and he's taken yeah. away from someone, um, which uh, I'll find out soon. But like, yeah, man, uh, we'll talk about this a little bit. I think I think the art is truly exceptional, you guys. Yeah, this I is, loved it. This is definitely '90s comic book art at its peak. Mm -hmm. um, as I, I would, would be, argue, at its best. Yeah, mm. definitely. Um, it's just like it's just you when you see that older style from like the late '80s and the early '90s, because you can tell like these are old comic books. But as I was reading this, um, I kind of. It brings me back to when you had these single issues. I guess there was an overarching story, but the main focus of, but that was the subplot. And then that would end up, that would build up to either an event or something like the monster of the week stuff. Kind of. Yeah. But I kind of miss that monster of the month stuff where yeah. it's like, you have the one villain and the one story. And it was beginning, middle end. And I really liked this new ghostwriter because the other ghostwriters I know are Johnny Blaze mm -hmm. and uh, Robbie Reyes. That's it. Yeah. But reading about Danny and his connection to the bike or, I mean, I'm, I'm not entrenched in classic ghostwriter like you are, but just like seeing him like go through that, like the spirit of like living with the spirit of vengeance and him fighting the goat, the scarecrow and like, you will, you will suffer my penis there. And he's like, no, I'm just going to die, dude. Bye. I think yeah. this one and magic are my two favorites of the bunch you picked. I really enjoyed this one. You must be made to suffer as you have made others <laughs> suffer. You must feel the pain. Yeah. Uh, it's just, I just love it. He's just like, it's like whacking poetic. Oh my God. Okay. So my favorite line is, um, it's Scarecrow. He's this is before he murders people. He's sitting on a on a New York like like skyscraper, and he's like that night in Brooklyn Heights. Oh my captain, how you so disappoint me! The fearful thing is rising again, seeing its ilk in others, and you are not here to prevent it. And it's a close up of his eyes crying. Mm -hmm. It's it's just it's so effing good. And this Ghost Rider run, Mark Texiera, he was a painter who became a comic artist. Um, he did Space Punisher. He's the artist for Space Punisher. Mm -hmm. um, the thing about his style specifically that doesn't keep up is he switched to digital and digital simply the, the, the shading doesn't work the same. The penciling doesn't work the same. His artwork is not what it used to be, but it's, he's also much older now. So, you know, yeah, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have picked him as the same artist. Yeah. Because he's gone digital now. And like yeah. he was on Ghost Rider for like, almost like, like throughout 20 years of history, he was working on it up until, until the two thousands and he switched to digital. And I was looking at some like, you know, like Ghost Rider 200 or whatever. And I'm like, the art's just not the same. It's the same artist, but it's just you switch to digital and it's the feel, the look isn't there anymore. Um, it's yeah. still a great artist, but like the texture of this of these pages, it's unlike any comic I've ever read. Like it is truly I I, I love it so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sparks, did you did you say anything about this one? I did. Yeah. I said I liked it. Yeah. 